Okay, we're back with our final segment with Greg Stubbe. Greg, a couple more issues. Um, uh, with the tough economy, there's been a lot of talk in the legislature about doing some different things that are can spur economic growth, and a lot of the environmentalists are saying that the legislatures are using the bad economy as an excuse to do away with some of the environmental enforcement. One of the things, though, is impact fee moratorium. Uh, I think uh, Mike Bennett has proposed this. The impact fees that developers have to pay, uh, have to contribute to pay for roads and things like that, to to waive those for three years to encourage uh, new new construction. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's important, especially when we're talking impact fees, for the local county commissions and the local folks to make those decisions. You know, what's happening in Jacksonville is not necessarily what's going on in Manatee County or Sarasota County. So I think it's important for those local governing bodies to make a lot of those decisions. I, I know recently the city of Bradenton has put a, a one-year freeze, I believe it is, on, on impact fees, which I think is great. And I think right now our economy needs that, but I think it's, it's better served for our local communities to be making those decisions. So if Sarasota wants to do it, they can do it, but don't have it statewide, right. you know, imposed. I see. Okay. Um, there, there's another bill that people who, are, who receive unemployment benefits, which unfortunately those numbers are going up, uh, Senator Bennett has also proposed that we drug test those people right. while they're getting their unemployment benefits, which has been pretty controversial. Right. Uh, where do you stand on that one? Well, I, I, it's kind of counterintuitive to me to have the folks that are on unemployment have to pay to get their drug testing. And I don't know if the government is in a position to pay for that with our current economic situation. And I think there's probably going to be some constitutional issues with an intrusive drug screening in a situation like that. So I'm sure it would be challenged. And I, I'm not real up on my constitutional law, but uh, I think it may, may not make constitutional muster with uh, the intrusiveness of having a drug test. How about, uh, you know, always talking about trying to raise more revenue. Florida does not have a state income tax, and so we're always looking for different things, fees, taxes, to right. try to raise revenue. One of the things that comes up every year is the internet, um, and and mom and pop businesses, main street businesses, say, hey, you know, people when they come into our stores, they have to pay sales tax, but if they buy something off the internet, they don't. It's tough for us to compete with that. What do you think about taxing goods that are bought off the internet? Well, when I, I talked to Ron about this issue too, and he, there's a current law that states that if you purchase things out of state, you have to pay taxes on that like every quarter. So I think we, if we just stick with what the current law but says. But the problem is that a lot of people don't do that. Exactly. And they the, and want the vendors to collect that, right. I guess. Yeah. And, and that's the problem is if we just enforce the current law, we would be doing what everybody kind of wants to see happen there. And I think it's Im important for us to be fair across the board. So if we're going to tax a certain tax in the store, then we probably need to do it on the Internet as well. Greg, hey, it's been great having you on the show. Good Thank luck you with your campaign. Me. Thank you. And it's been nice to meet you. you How too. can people get in contact with you? Uh, all of our information is on our campaign website. It's www.electgregstubey.com. All of the information regarding the campaign and upcoming events are there. Great. Okay, now it's time for the Weasel of the Week. The Weasel of the Week are the members of the Board of Directors of the Sarasota Tiger Bay Club who forced out Marge Baldwin. Marge Baldwin is the Sarasota Tiger Bay Club. She built the Sarasota Tiger Bay Club. What the Tiger Bay Club is, is it's a, it's a forum where uh, it's a community affairs forum where they have different guests come in, elected officials, and uh, civic-minded individuals come in as guest speakers and once a month we sit down you have lunch you watch them the, the unique thing about it is it's bipartisan you can go there and uh, there's a lot of independents there's libertarians there's democrats there's republicans and it's rare that you have events where you get an eclectic mix like that in the same room so it can be kind of a fun and raucous atmosphere and the and the people who are there as guests sometimes get some very tough questions but nobody tougher than marge Marge was a character, and she ran those meetings. It was always entertaining, and she always asked difficult and great questions of the guests, and sometimes uh, the programs are very entertaining. Well, some people just deserve to go out on their own terms. Unlike Greg, I'm an FSU guy, and I favor Bobby Bowden 
going out on his own terms. The guy built the football program. He deserves to go when he's ready. And so did Marge Baldwin. She should have been allowed to leave on her own terms and not been forced out by the board after she ran Tiger Bay for 25 years. And for that move, the board of directors of the Sarasota Tiger Bay Club are weasels of the week. See you next week.